Hi there, this is Mrs. Hammer from Richardson High School. We are learning about dimensional analysis today. So if you are in on-level chemistry at Richardson, you want to find the page in your notes packet that says dimensional analysis. And um, hopefully this is helpful if you were absent or you didn't quite get it the first time around in class, we are going to go through the notes. All right, so dimensional analysis, y'all, when we say dimensions, we mean like measurements. So we are analyzing measurements and changing from one unit to another. Um, you may know a different way to do this, and that's okay. Uh, I like to say that you might know the training wheel version, you know, like maybe you learned it in junior high, and that's cool. But we're just going to learn a more advanced version. So this is like riding your bike without training wheels. There's lots of advantages to doing things this way. So that is what we're doing. So first off, the metric system. In chemistry, we tend to stick to the international system of units. It's called the SI system. Um, or we often call it the metric system. So mass is measured in grams, length is measured in meters, and volume is measured in liters. These are our preferred units. Now that doesn't mean we won't occasionally have to convert something from inches to the metric system, or something from pounds to grams in the metric system, but these are the units that we tend to use most often. Prefixes that you should understand, um, a kilo means 1,000, so if we're talking about a kilometer, that's quite a long distance, it is equal to 1,000 meters. So kilometer means 1,000 meters. The next one that you should understand is centi. So um, a centimeter is one one hundredth of something. So one meter is made up of 100 centimeters. I kind of think of it like a century. A century is made up of 100 years. And finally, a milli. Okay, so a milli is one one thousandth of something. So um, 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. And if there's 100 centimeters in a meter, then we can write it as one meter has 1,000 millimeters. So these are the prefixes that we're going to use most often in chemistry. The conversions that we will use um, go along with what I just explained. So Kilo, all of the, these two right here use that kilo prefix. So one kilogram is a thousand grams, one kilometer is a thousand meters. Uh, you don't have to necessarily memorize these, but we do need to be familiar with them. Next up, we have millis. So I'm gonna kind of circle all the millis together. One base unit of something, so like one gram, one meter, one liter is made up of a thousand millis. So one gram is a thousand milligrams, one meter is a thousand millimeters, and one liter is a thousand milliliters. The others that are on here are just kind of standalone conversions that we commonly use. I will point out one that is a little bit maybe uh, different from the rest. A milliliter is actually a cubic centimeter. Y'all, this is a volume measurement. So if you think about the graduated cylinders that we've been using, as we begin the year, they tend to have milliliters marked. Well, it's just no worth noting that a milliliter and a centimeter cubed, you know, that's actually just the same three-dimensional volume, okay? That's what we're saying is those two things are equal to each other. That will come in handy when we start talking about density in the next topic. All right, so this new method, dimensional analysis, this is a method that chemistry uh, scientists and other scientists use to solve conversion problems. Um, I will be honest with you, you will use it quite a bit if you take physics next year. So we're going to say, just go with it. Again, it's a different way to do something, um, and it will serve you well as you move forward in chemistry. So to kind of get our brains in the right spot, we're, I have a couple of questions. Um, what do you know about running one kilometer versus running 1,000 meters? Well, if you go back to this picture that we looked at, remember that 1,000 meters and one kilometer, right? that same distance. So what do we know? It's an equal distance. So you can say you ran one kilometer or 1,000 meters, and it's the same thing. So then do you believe me that since one kilometer and 1,000 meters are the same, if you divide them by each other, it equals one? I want you to believe me. The reason is because if you divide something by an equivalent value, it equals one. You're right, like four over four we learned in math class equals one. Well, same thing here. One kilometer over a thousand meters equals one. 
And then what do you know about multiplying a value by one? What I mean here, oops, gave it away. What I mean here is if you have like 32 and you multiply it by one, what do you get? You get 32. What it happens if you take pizza and you multiply it by one, you get the same thing. You get pizza, all right? So it stays the same value if you multiply something by one. So do you believe me that multiplying a value by one over 1,000 meters, which remember that that equals one, will give you the same value in the end? That little girl says, yes, I believe you. I hope that you are on board too. So these two ideas are key to solving problems with dimensional analysis. So um, this example down here in the corner you have on your notes page. So any number can be multiplied by one without changing its value. Remember four times one still equals four. And then multiplying by conversion factor is like multiplying by one because the numerator is equal to the denominator. So if we multiply 24 inches by one foot over 12 inches, well, that's basically equal to one. So it's still equal to the same amount in the end. What the heck am I saying here? I'm gonna highlight what we started with in this calculation, 24 inches equals two feet. So hopefully you believe me that 24 inches equals two feet. Well, then what's up with the stuff in the middle? The stuff in the middle was just the conversion factor to help us get there from 24 inches to two feet. <clears throat> so this is just an example that you, um, I want you to, actually, this is the same one that you have in your notes. Let's just, let's just start an example. So we're gonna practice together. I'm gonna make a very strong statement. Do not work ahead. Learn the way by following along. This is the way to do it. Um, if you try to do this a different way, it's gonna mess you up later in the chemistry semester. So please don't, stay with me. Here we go. So this is this first problem here. We are gonna convert 25.4 milliliters to liters. Now, again, do not try to do this a different way. If you're doing it a different way, you're not doing what this is called dimensional analysis. So I'm gonna teach you the, I call it the Mrs. Hammer says, do it this way way. So follow along, copy down this uh, problem in your notes as we go. So step one is you put what you know over one. So 25.4 milliliters over one. That is just our starting um, setup for a problem like this. Next, we are gonna multiply by what's called a conversion factor. And that conversion factor is gonna be a fraction. So we just set it up with a line, ready to go. Okay, next, you take the unit that you have, milliliters, and watch what I do. I'm gonna bring it down diagonal. So that's your next step. You don't even think about it. You just take whatever unit is up there, bring it down diagonal. And then the unit that you want to go to goes on top. So we want to go to liters, so that goes on top. Notice that I put units in this conversion factor before I did numbers. This is the way, you learn this way. Next, I'm gonna ask myself, what values here are equal to each other? So how many liters equals how many milliliters? Well. You should be looking at the chart in your notes, this one right here, that tells you the conversion factor. So we're looking at this one right here. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. So we're going to go plug those numbers in. So it was one liter, and you have to get them in the right spot, equals 1,000 milliliters. Cool. The next question we ask ourselves is what units show up on top and bottom? that would cancel, okay? So we are gonna cancel out milliliters because it shows up on top and bottom. Just like in math class, if you have X over X, they cancel. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so we are ready to solve for our answer. Um, and actually, I didn't mean to draw a line there. So the only unit left over is liters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. Now, here's the last step, do the math. So you're gonna want to grab your calculator, and what we do here is we multiply the numbers that are across the top and we divide by the numbers that are across the bottom. So in our calculator this time, we're gonna type 25.4 divided by 1,000. That's the calculation that you would type in. And when we do that, we get our answer is 0 0.0254. And that is our answer. Again, if you know a different way to do this, awesome, but we're learning this way today. 
All right, the last thing that we consider is sig figs. This number right here was three sig figs to begin with. When we do a dimensional analysis, however many sig figs you start with, that's how many you want in your answer. Well, good news. When you work with the metric system, the sig figs work themselves out. This is already three sig figs, the two, five, four. So we are done. This is our answer. Okay, next up, problem two. Again, stick with me, don't work ahead, follow along. So we are going to take our number that we're trying to convert, 1.8 kilometers, and we're gonna convert it to meters. So step one, put what you know over one. If I go too fast, please use the pause button. All right, next up, we're gonna multiply it by a conversion factor. We're gonna take the unit that's up top, which is kilometers, and we're gonna bring it down diagonal. So kilometers on bottom, and the unit that we want to go to is gonna go on top, meters. There it is. Next up, we are gonna think back to the uh, equalities chart. How many meters equals how many kilometers? Well, it's the top one in distance. We've got one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Again, those numbers have to be exactly the way they were in the um, conversion chart. It has to be one kilometer and 1,000 meters. You can't swap them or it won't work right. So then we ask ourselves what units cancel top and bottom? It's kilometers. So we want to give that slash through kilometers. The unit left over is meters. And the math that we do here, y'all, remember we are going to multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. You don't have to divide by one. So the calculation in our calculator is 1.8 times 1,000, and that gives me 1,800. And the unit left over, the one that did not slash out and cancel out is meters, so that is our answer. The final thing we do is just consider sig figs. The starting value had two sig figs, and we want our ending value to have two sig figs, and it does. So we give this problem a smiley face. We're ready to move on. Okay, we're gonna do a few more together. Next step, we're gonna convert 85 milliliters to liters. Okay, so put what you know over one, 85 milliliters over one. To convert it, we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. The unit that goes on bottom is the unit that comes down diagonal, that's the milliliters. Like what I mean by that is the unit there always 100% of the time comes down there. Next, the unit that goes up top is the unit that you want to go to. We want to go to liters, so that goes up top. And then we plug in the numbers from the conversion factor. Well, 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. What unit cancels on top and bottom? We're gonna give it a satisfying splash through the unit, milliliters, top and bottom goes away. We're ready to solve. Again, we multiply the numbers across the top. We divide by the numbers on the bottom. So this is gonna be 85. You don't need to multiply by one. You can if you want to. And then divided by 1000. So that's what you're gonna type in your calculator. And we're gonna get 0 0.085. And the unit in our answer is whatever unit was left up top that did not get slashed out, liters. And that's our answer. Last consideration is sig figs. Again, because this one was in the metric system, it worked out just fine on its own. No, uh, two sig figs became two sig figs. All right, y'all. Number four is a little bit different because this is not the metric system. Inches are the English system. So really, I mean, it's going to work the same way. The only difference is going to be the sig figs. So here we go. We put what we know over one. So the question says, if one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, Convert three centimeters to inches. Now, I'm going to be honest, y'all. This one has a lot of numbers going on. We need to really hone in on the question. What are they really asking us to do? I'm highlighting it. This is what the question is saying. Convert three centimeters to inches. The other piece of information there, um, which I will highlight in orange, y'all, that is just information. I'll label it info. That's not the question. That's just some background information that you'll use, but it's not the question. All right, here we go. Put what you know over one. We are trying to convert three centimeters to inches. So we got three centimeters over one. We're gonna multiply it by a conversion factor. 
the centimeters drops down diagonal and the unit that we want to go to goes up top which was inches there it is now what the heck y'all this is not in the chart at the top of the page but it told us in the problem one inch equals 2.54 centimeters so the one inch is going to go up top there and the 2.54 centimeters is going to go on bottom so I'm going to erase my little markings and here we go centimeters gets the 2.54 Inches gets the one. Okay, equals, oh, sorry, forget to slash out the centimeters because they're on top and bottom. Equals, now the calculator is going to say 1.18110. Pause, make sure you got that in your calculator if you need to. It should have been 3.00 divided by 2.54. Because remember, multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. So, calculator gives us this real long number. Well, what did we say about sig figs? We said however many sig figs there were in the beginning, that's how many sig figs we want in the end. So we want to round the number 1.18110 blah 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 to just three sig figs. So there they are. Ask ourselves, does it stay the same or round up? In this case, it stays the same. So it is 1.18 inches. That is your final answer. So we get a smiley face all done. Okay, we're gonna do one more together, okay? So we're gonna convert from 34.98 grams to kilograms. Okay, so we're gonna start by putting what we know over one. So 34.98 grams over one, excellent. Next, we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor to change it. So we take the grams down diagonal, and then what unit do we want to go to? Kilograms, that's what's gonna go on top. Next, you're going to pull the numbers from the conversion factors. Y'all, um, back in the chart, it said that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So those are the numbers we're going to put in there. So on the bottom in front of grams, we're going to put 1,000. On the top in front of kilograms, we're going to put one. And finally, the grams slashes out. The number that we get when we solve this, I made a mistake in my PowerPoint here, y'all. So ignore that completely. Okay, we're going to type in 34.98 times 1 divided by 1,000. Um, the answer will be 0 0.03498. Okay, I think I accidentally multiplied instead of divided. Just ignore that. Okay, and then the final unit left over is kilograms. So kilograms goes right there. Excellent. Last consideration is sig figs. Well, we had four sig figs up here to begin with, and so we want four sig figs in the end. Good news, because it was the metric system, it already has four sig figs. The sig figs are the non-zero digits there. So we've got the three, four, nine, eight. Perfect. All right, this next section here, y'all, um, I want you to try a few on your own. If you have the notes, you can find them and do them on your paper. You should have room for it. If you're just watching along and you're not necessarily uh, having the notes in front of you, uh, just do them on a piece of paper and um, pause the video. And when you're finished, come back and I will put the answers up here. Okay, so number one, we are gonna go from kilometers to meters and we get a big number, 23,900. Number two, we're going from liters to milliliters, another big answer, 4,700. Feel free to pause and copy this down or make any corrections and then move on when you're ready. Number three, we've got 22.8 centimeters to meters. We end up with a number smaller than one, 0 0.228 meters. And finally, this one was more like number four that we did earlier with inches and centimeters. They gave us some information that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. And we're going to convert 48 pounds to kilograms. So this right here was actually the problem. So we put the 48 pounds over one and go from there. And our answer ends up being 22 kilograms. All right. Good job. Um, feel free to take a little brain break. We have learned how to solve one step dimensional analysis problems. Um, and the rest of this video, we will move on and we will look at multi step problems. All right, let's move on. So, 
There we go. Uh, next up, we're going to look at multi-step dimensional analysis problems. Um, if you can't convert in one step like we just did, you'll need to just extend the dimensional analysis by one more step. Um, honestly, it could be more than one more step. It could be three or four total steps, but we're just going to focus on two today. The key is have a plan. So for instance, if I asked you to convert from millimeters to kilometers, if you check the chart, we don't have a conversion to go from millimeters to kilometers. So what we would have to do is pick out what I call a middleman unit. So if we went to meters first and then kilometers, then that would totally work. So the key is to have a plan. What unit process are you going to use? And that's what we're going to practice. Okay, so we're going to start out with this one. Uh, what is the length of a football field in centimeters? If there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch and 36 inches in a yard, a football field is 100 yards long. So um, we are going to go with 100.0 for the length of the football field. Um, of course, it might be a little shorter, a little bit longer, but it's pretty close to 100. So um, key thing that I want to look at here is make sure that we um, know what exactly we're converting versus what's information. 2.54 centimeters in an inch, y'all, that's info, that's information. And same thing with 36 inches in a yard, that's information. Those are gonna be conversion factors that we use. That's not what we're trying to convert. We're trying to convert the football field. So we're gonna start with the 100 yards over one. That is our starting point. Now, before we move for any further, let's get a plan, y'all. We know that length in yards and we are eventually trying to get to centimeters. But if you look at the information we have, we don't know like how many centimeters are in a yard. We have no idea. So what's the middleman unit? It's the other one that they gave us. We can go from yards to inches, and then we can go from inches to centimeters. So it's key to have a plan. So here we go. We're going to multiply by conversion factor. Let's set it up. Yards comes down diagonal. And the unit that we want to go to next is inches, because we know how to do that. So how many inches are in a yard? Well, one yard is 36 inches. Again, top and bottom are equal to each other. One yard equals 36 inches. What unit cancels out? That's going to be yards. Next up, inches comes down diagonal. So this is what's new. We didn't stop there. We're just going to do it again, y'all. Do the same thing. We're going to convert again with another conversion factor, and the unit inches comes down diagonal. And then what unit do we want to go to? That's what goes on top, centimeters. And then we want to fill in the numbers. How many centimeters and how many inches go together? Well, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. That's the info from up above. What unit cancels out because it's on top and bottom? That's going to be inches. Cool. And what unit is left over? Centimeters is the unit left over. So our answer is going to end up being in centimeters. Now let's talk about the math here. Again, we are going to multiply all the numbers across the top and then divide by anything that was on the bottom. Now, I know that dividing by one does nothing, but I'm just going to write it out anyway. So in your calculator, you would do 100.0 times 36 times 2.54 divided by one divided by one. And that's where we're going to get our answer. So you multiply across the top and you divide by the bottom. So that is going to equal 9,144 centimeters. Now, the last little thing that we will consider is the sig figs. So like I said earlier, the sig figs, however many you start with in your initial measurement right here is how many you want in your answer right here. Y'all, this is just a total coincidence, but this one worked out just fine. Our starting number had one, two, three, four sig figs, and the calculator gave us an answer with one, two, three, four sig figs, so we call it done. That is our answer. Give it a smiley face, and we're ready to move on and look at another example. Here we go. Oh, look, see, that wasn't so bad, right? Okay, next up, we're going to convert 6.588 milligrams to kilograms. Awesome. So put what you know over one. 
6.588 milligrams over 1. Next, we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. Next, we're going to bring that unit down diagonal. Next, we're going to put the unit that we want to go to on top. Now, I forgot. Silly Miss Hammer, we didn't make a plan. Oh my gosh. We're trying to go from milligrams to kilograms. But y'all, there's no conversion factor in the chart that tells us how to go from milligrams to kilograms. So what's the middleman? What's the unit that relates both of them? Well, that's grams. All right, so we're going to go from milligrams to grams first. Now that we have a plan, that's easy. So we're going to go to grams. Okay, we're going to think out about how many grams equals how many milligrams from the chart. So what number goes on bottom? 1,000, because 1,000 milligrams equals one gram. Top numbers, bottom numbers are equal values. What cancels? That's going to be milligrams. Okay, All right, we're not done yet, though. So we're going to just look, tack on another one. So what unit comes down diagonal? That's going to be grams. What unit goes on top? Oops. Ooh, whoa, whoa, I went way to the end. There we go. That's going to be kilograms. And then we ask ourselves how many equals how many? Well, 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. What unit cancels out? Grams. Great. We are ready to look at our answer. The unit remaining is kilograms. So my answer is going to be in kilograms. Let's talk about what calculation we would do. Remember, we multiply the numbers across the top and we divide by the numbers on the bottom. So in our calculator, we would do 6.588 times 1 times 1 divided by 1,000 and divided by 1,000. So in your calculator, that is going to give you this pretty long number, which is fine. 0 0.00006588 000 kilograms. That is it. That is the right number sig figs because we started with four and we ended with four. Now, if you wanted, you could put that number in scientific notation. You could move the decimal over one, two, three, four, five, six places. And so it would become 6.588 times 10 to the negative six kilograms. And I cannot say this enough. Y'all, these two numbers are the same thing. Potato, potato, they're, they're both the right answer. They're both fine. All right, we're gonna do one more. I love this problem. So a nice little walk down Beltline Road from Richardson High School where we are to the Donut Palace is about half a mile. So we're gonna say 0 0.50 miles. That's what Google Maps told me. If one mile is 5,280 feet, how many inches do you walk to get to Donut Palace? Okay, let's see. First, I, I think we maybe need a plan. So we've got 0 0.50 miles. What are we trying to get to? Inches. Hmm. There's no information in here that tells us how many inches are in a mile, but they do tell us how many feet are in a mile. And we know how to get from feet to inches because we know that one foot is 12 inches. So we're doing all right. Here we go. 0 0.5 miles over 1 times a conversion factor. Bring miles down diagonal, and feet is going to go on top. So this is the information from the problem. One mile is 5,280 feet. So on bottom, we're going to put one mile. On top, we're going to put 5,280. Next, miles is the one that cancels. We're going to keep going because we're not done yet. Feet is going to come down diagonal, and what we're going to go to is inches. Now, the great news is we know how many inches are in a foot. So on bottom, what are we going to put in front of foot? One. One foot equals how many inches? Twelve. Excellent. Feet cancels. So our answer here, again, we're going to multiply these numbers across the top. So 0 0.50 times... 5280 times 12 is going to give us 6,705.6. And what unit did not cancel out the unit left over? Inches. Okay, we're so close, y'all. Last thing is our number was two sig figs because it's about 0 0.50 miles. It's not exact. So it might not be exactly 6,705.6 inches. So we only want two sig figs in our answer. So we're going to keep the six and the seven. 
So we're going to keep it about 6,700. So that's what we're going to say, 6,700 inches. All right. So next up, we have a couple to practice by yourself. Um, I will show the problem and then pause for about five seconds before I reveal the answer. So if you are trying it on your own, please use the pause function to try it before you check out the answer. So our first problem, convert 5.1 kilometers to millimeters. The answer is right here. Set up just like we've been doing all the other ones, it's 5,100,000 millimeters. Okay, next up, number two, how many hours are in a fortnight if a fortnight is two weeks? Um, the plan on this one, I'll help you with the plan and then you can try it on your own. We're talking about a fortnight. A fortnight is two weeks. Okay, so that's where we're starting. And we're trying to get to hours. So we're gonna go from weeks to days and then from days to hours. So that's your plan, so try it out and then I will put up the answer. Make sure you pause. Here we go. So two weeks is 336 hours. All right, the final practice on your own problem. A Tylenol Extra Strength tablet contains 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. How many kilograms are in a tablet? So you're gonna put your 500 milligrams over one and convert to kilograms. So feel free to pause, try it on your own, and then here is the answer. It works out to be 0 0.00005 kilograms. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. I hope this video was helpful, especially if you were absent. Um, please check with your teacher or your online calendar to find out what your homework assignment is. And if you have questions, of course, as always, just come ask your teacher. We are here to help you and happy to help. Thanks for watching. Bye.